none of us really thought it could get any worse than that 5-0 against Liverpool. And then, well, that 2-0 against City happened. It might have been 2-0 on paper, but it was far. It was a mauling. It was an absolute mauling. And they were kind to us. They took pity on us. And uh, the reaction there, obviously, is all about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and whether or not he should be sacked as manager. You know my standpoint on this and that by now. Yeah, he should be sacked. Manchester United as a club need to act. But what I want to do in this video is react to what Roy Keane had to say about Solskjaer after the game, react to what Gary Neville had to say after the game, because both of them, big, powerful voices inside the footballing community, inside the United community. So I think it's important to take a look at exactly what both of them had to say. Please, throughout the entire video, you keep leaving your opinions in the comments, but I want to dive straight into this one. There's so much to discuss in the fallout to this game against City. It's it's not pretty. It's really not. I'm not enjoying it. As I said, it, it, that, that cut me that game. But I want to take a look here at what Roy Keane and Gary Neville had to say. So let's waste no time and go straight into it. As you can see here, Roy Keane saying, if you've got bluffers on the bus with you and you're dependent on Sean Wamasaka, Ole, you might be better out of it. Roy Keane is unsure whether Solskjaer is the man for Manchester United. This is what he had to say. You know, you're hoping, fellas, oh, Mick is going to enjoy his day in Man City. And they're all having their little day in Liverpool, one, one tight and turkey out of yours. And United are in a bad place, but there's a way out of it. Is Ole the man to do it? Huge question mark. I hope it is, what but every... Think? It's more hope than belief. Because every time there's a bad performance like that, Oli gets the blame. Every time United produce a result or during the week, Oli's the luckiest man on the planet. He's got Ronaldo. Oli can Roy, right now at this point, it's nothing more than hope instead of belief. The belief, I, I, had, I genuinely had the belief up until that, that it was a Leicester game with the first game where I was like, okay, this feels a little bit different than before. Because every time Solskjaer's got close, had got close to the brink before, we had turned it around. And that game was the first evidence for me that instead of uh, recovering from the slip, the slip went further down. And then we've had all the games since. And yeah, it's just, I'm just sitting here in pure, pure hope at these points. But I don't think that hope's ever going to be fulfilled. Not at this stage. Oli can't, can't seem to win. Of course, he has to look at himself in the mirror. Let me, he has to look at himself in the mirror and go, I need to do better here. Yep. I think he came into Man United at a difficult time. He's managed one of the biggest clubs in the world. Yep. But if you've got bluffers on the bus with you and you're dependent on Shaw and Wampus, imagine you're dependent on these guys. Holly, you might be better off out of it. Yep. Now, one thing I do want to say here quickly before we speak about how bad the players play, this is not a time to start throwing players under the bus. All right. Uh, we've been here before. We know this story. And, and it really is a case, in, in my opinion, of, of the players being reflective of the mood that's inside the club, that's reflective of the manager and the reflective of the overall mood of the club. Uh, Shaw has been atrocious this season. Shaw has been absolutely abysmal. To leave the ball for that second goal was just inexplicably bad. Harry Maguire, an absolute shell of himself. wan known as the best one-on-one -on -one defender today, just making mistakes all over the shop. That, that time when he went for the press and let Foden run in behind, he's lucky that didn't turn out into a goal. All of United's players, absolutely abysmal. Well, Roy Keane there is, yeah, I, is, is kind of highlighting a point that I always thought would end up burning Solskjaer. And it's it, it, there's only so far that the nice guy approach can really work for you because when you get to this point where you really need to get a response out of your players, if you don't have that sort of um, that respect from the players, they won't really listen to what you're saying. I think I've compared it to a situation before. I've had a boss previously in my life who you know was a really good, really, really good boss, really good friend. And the sort of the, the merge between friend and boss sort of got a bit grey to the point where at, at the time when results and turnarounds were needed, no one really respected what he was going to say because he was kind of semi your friend at the same time as being your boss. And that, that, that merging of the friendship and the management, it didn't work. And I think the same thing is going on with Solskjaer here. I think the players really, really respect him as a friend, as a human being. Everybody does. And that's what's making all this public downfall so painful but i think it's working against him in these situations like this and Keane is just not holding back man he's not holding back he thinks the players are just bluffing their way and this is a man who has got such incredible standards as a manchester united player that's why i appreciated what seeing roy Keane's post-match comments because you could tell they came from the same place that all of us fans are hurting and that's why i wanted to do a reaction and take a look at them and let's continue there because it, it said plenty more and this, in this bit, he's talking about Fred in particular, which I'm sure plenty of you will probably like, actually. If Ollie walked in here now, I'd grab him by this and I'd go, why are you playing Fred? 
Football managers have to make their own decisions. They're working with their players day in, day out. I would look at them and go, why are you playing Fred in the middle of the park? Huge position for but Manchester United. And that's United. what goes on to the manager. And that is a, yeah. that's why and he has to take responsibility for that. I agree. And, 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 this, and this is the point where, yeah, it, it, if you, you can start pointing fingers at the, uh, the players if you want to, but you have to point fingers at the managers ultimately. And Fred is a player who... When he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's horrendous. Uh, and a player like Donny van der Beek being frozen out of this Manchester United team. And you saw it again today. Van der Beek was, uh, started warming up, I think, in about the 85th minute there against City. No, not 85th. In the, in the 55th minute against City. He didn't come on until the 80th minute, 80, 85th minute. And he came on for Bruno Fernandes, not for Fred. Solskjaer just does not see him as a central midfielder in any way, shape or form. And absolutely blind, almost like stubbornly refuses to play him in that central midfield role. He'll only play him when he comes on for Bruno Fernandes, when he comes on for Paul Pogba. And that is definitely mismanagement. And I always said, we always said, all of us, right, that Fred and McTominay would be one of the heels that he died on. We didn't expect that Maguire and Shaw would make another bigger mountain next to it. But yeah. Playing Fred, playing loyalty to certain players who were just underperforming and not just Fred. I mean, McTominay again today against Atalanta, he was poor. That's why I'm saying there's no point really trying to put too much scorn on individuals because every single one of them was horrendous today as they were, as they have been for a long, long time. And uh, going into Donny van der Beek a little bit more, uh, well, Roy Kent had a bit of a disagreement here with uh, Mika Richards anyway. Van der Beek, I spent 100 million on him, and he said he's the answer. I'm not saying. Well, he, 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 he played in the last season. He needs to be back, given a, a very average. We, 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 very average. We talked about Fred and McTominay. We, 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 we talked about. We have. We have the same. Same conversation. Jack Briggs is on the bench today. He's 100 million. He's on the bench today. Well, that's irrelevant to the the conversation. He's saying that Oli keeps playing same players, Fred and McTominay, and I like McTominay. He works hard, and he's a good young player. He's in a Man United team that are strong. I mean. We all know this whole situation about Van der Beek. Eh? Uh, Van der Beek and Sancho, two massively underused players. Could things have worked out differently for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this season if he used Sancho and Van der Beek? It's a hypothetical question with an impossible answer because you can't get the answer. You can just make your assumptions and your guesses and your presumptions. I don't think it could have been any worse, that's for sure. Manchester United midfield has just been non-existent all season. But at the same time as that, if we're looking at the bigger problems and going further and further back. Man United as a club... Under Sol- I mean, Solskjaer has always maintained that he's got the power of veto over decision-making at the club when it comes to signings and who to sign and who not to sign. The club went all out for two years to sign Jadon Sancho, leaving him on the bench, and we did not sign a defensive midfielder, right? So if you're looking at the priorities, it's completely and utterly twisted and mixed up. If Sancho was that important to us, why has he not been played? Is it because we've got Cristiano Ronaldo in at the last minute and it changed all our plans for this season? Potentially. Uh, either way, it's complete and utter oversight of a club that's got... Uh, Michael Carrick, who's an ex-midfielder, Mike Feeder, who's an ex-midfielder, Kieran McKenna, who's an ex-midfielder, and Darren Fletcher, who's an ex-midfielder, all inside the coaching staff, and none of them to really come out and say, you know what, it's a defensive midfielder we really need, and we wouldn't have been having these boring, similar conversations about Fred being bad in midfield, or McTominay, or Van der Beek coming in there. What about Paul Pogba? It's poor. It's poor, it's poor, it's poor, and it comes down to the decision-making of the club in terms of where we spent our money in the summer. So Van der Beek, you know, he does need chances. Sancho needs chances. But at this at this particular point in time now, it's too little too late to be having these arguments about who should be playing and who shouldn't be playing. The bigger arguments are all about the manager, about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And this is where I'm going to move on to what Gary Neville had to say, because this is probably where a lot of you want to have the discussion in the comments. Gary Neville on the gantry, speaking to Mika Richards, Graham Soonis, and Roy Keane inside the studio. Let's take a look. At what Gary Neville had to say, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pick points out of it, right? This is what he had to say if you haven't seen it. Gary, do you think there's better managers out there who are, who are a better fit for Manchester United? Jose Mourinho's a better manager than Ole Solskjaer. I thought Louis van Gaal was, David Moyes was, they've, they've all had better pedigree than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. However, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has finished second in the league last year, getting possessions. So there's no science to that right. question, Michael. There are better managers. Of course, there are better managers in terms of credentials and on paper. Right. But the confusion that exists in this club at this moment in time is that they've gone to managers previously have got world-class credentials. And that shouldn't stop them doing it again. And I think that's where the confusion right. or the hesitancy comes from the board, that they've been down this route of bringing in a Mourinho before, so they wouldn't bring in a Conte because they've been burnt by that. Gary, with, with that... Look, look, I, I think this, this situation is um, with Gary Neville. I think over the last few weeks, he's... Gary Neville was always a, 
over the last few years as a pundit, he's grown in, in reputation, and deservedly so. He's one of the most astute pundits there is. But when it comes to this particular situation that's been unfolding with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and with Gary Neville, I mean, he's stuck in the friend zone, man. Um, Gary Neville sounding has been sounding more like a politician than a football pundit in the last few weeks where he, he won't say what we all know to be the truth. And he basically is dodging around the subject of saying that Solskjaer is not good enough and should be sacked as Manchester United manager and just basically speaking about everything else possible apart from that main, ignoring the elephant in the room conversations. That's what's really been going on with Gary Neville. And and, and him saying there that Man United have been burned with um, with Mourinho. Yeah, we have been burned with Mourinho. But in the same sense, you know, we were burned when we signed Daniel Di Maria. We were burned when we signed Alexis Sanchez, but it didn't stop us uh, paying big money for other signings after that. It, 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 it happens in football. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't work out. But so just because it hasn't worked out in one sense before, it doesn't mean that you're then going to completely scrap that off as a, as a direction you're ever going to go in again. And if you did that, it's completely foolish. And it really pisses me off, really, that I can see things like this coming out from Jamie Bloody Carragher after the game where we lose fucking 2-0 to City, after the two weeks after losing 5-0 to Liverpool. And I see him coming out saying, what a load of nonsense it is it's because Van Howe and Jose failed that United shouldn't look for a better manager. Why am I sitting here agreeing with bloody Jamie Carragher? I don't want to be agreeing with Jamie Carragher. I want to be agreeing with Gary Neville. But Jamie there is speaking a bit more sense because, yeah, it, it, it might not have worked out before, but it doesn't mean that you wouldn't try that again. Now, Conte is a, is a decision that I understood the club not going for. Not because of Conte, you know, being that manager who jars with the board and, and, these, and could burn the board again. No, nah, I don't really... I don't think that's a reason to... I understand... That's where the conflict comes at the club. But with Conte, the reason I did understand is because of the direction it will go with the terms of the squad of the players that we've got. This squad is now capable of challenging for the Premier League and what we need is someone to come in and just sort of continue the style that Solskjaer was trying to build, doing around a 4-2-3-1, a 4-3-3, hitting on the counter-attack, quick transitions, but just someone who's better at it than him, rather than someone like Conte, who's a completely different style, completely different philosophy, and this squad just doesn't suit it and he has to get one or two transfer windows, maybe, to sort of get rid of players and bring new players in to, be, to fit that system. That's why I thought that the Conte decision and not, not to go for him made a little bit more sense than not. But with everything that's going on at Manchester United right now, we're forcing ourselves into a situation where we're like, we can't continue with Solskjaer and we don't know where we're going next. What do we do? What do we do? That's, what, that's the conversation that the club are having at board level. Let's continue having a look at what Gary Neville had to say because he hasn't finished quite there. And this is a good question that was posed to him. But were those managers, Mourinho and Van Hulk, I've heard you say this, were those managers, Mourinho and Van Hulk, at the top of their game? Yes, they were. No, they, had were, been, they were past it. Um, super coaches, if you like. They had been. They had won trophies. Yep. Mourinho won trophies at Manchester United. Were they managers nope. at the very top of their nope, game? No, they weren't. But who would they get now, Kelly? So you, you, you couldn't, you couldn't get... You couldn't, that's not what I'm asking. And that, by the way, that's a very classic political move is, is to not, when you ask a question, to ask a different question in response. By the way, I'm just saying that. No, but, no, but what I'm saying is if you say now, OK, Pochettino... Pochettino's got a sort of what would be a lack of uh, a lack of trophies on his CV to say that should he come and manage Manchester United? Because no, what happened? We didn't. We didn't win trophies before he came. Uh, it's at this point where you know, as I said, Gary's undermining his own qualities as a pundit to try and look at this situation completely objectively. That's his role as a pundit is to look at every situation objectively and to give the truth on it. And the fact of the matter is, is that at this point he the 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 lines are being blended between objectivity and subjectivity. What that means is that because Gary Neville's got an affiliation and an association with Solskjaer, it's sort of it's it's skewing his his mindset, it's skewing his thought process, and he's and, he, and he's ignoring blatant truths to go towards what he truly believes because he's got he's got emotions attached to it. It's a subjective decision rather than something objectively. You look, just look at it on its own, purely facts, and you say that's right or wrong. That's what an objective decision is. And that's what Solskjaer is not able to do. Sorry, not Solskjaer. That's what Gary Neville is not able to do right now about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. As I said, it annoys me. It really genuinely annoys me that I'm sitting here agreeing with Jamie Carrigan what he's tweeting out. Because, yeah, it is a load of nonsense that because of what we got burnt with before that we can't do it again in the future. It's not the way that a super club runs. And it, look, it, there are so many of us that don't really agree with this whole modern style of football. But the fact of the matter it is, it, it is the modern style of football. We aren't going to find a Fergie again. We aren't probably going to find a Wenger again. 
Football works in cycles of rarely more than three to four years with managers. There's going to be people that stand out. There's going to be Klops. There's going to be Guardiolas that break that mould slightly, but still nowhere near the levels of Wenger and Fergie. Football is far shorter now in terms of its cycles. And Manchester United are stuck in the past when we're still in that concept of, no, we can find that long, 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 long-term solution. Right now, long-term in football is what? Three, four years? It's probably quite good going if you can get a manager for four, four more, four more years with a manager is very long term now in modern day football. Back in the day, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Two, two to three years was an absolute minimum. But times have changed. Manchester United need to change. We've had, of course, we've got burnt. We went with, we, we, nothing has burned us more than Moyes. And that was on Fergie's recommendation. And that was somebody that we tried to bring in immediately to just replace Fergie and the characteristics there. And it didn't work. And the fallout from this game is, is quite simple. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to be sacked as Manchester United's manager. What's next is a harder conversation. I'm going to, now this week, I'm going to be doing plenty of videos, doing some research, looking into interim options, looking into Ten Hag, who for me is a, the best long-term option. But what would happen between now and the summer if that was lots of videos I'm going to do this week because I, I feel, yeah, it's my duty to do it. I've got a platform now. And if the club aren't planning, it doesn't mean that I can't and we can't have a conversation about it. But what's your reaction to everything that Gary Neville said about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his future? Do you think this idea that because we've been burned before with Louis Van Gaal, with Jose Mourinho, that, we, that we're not going to go for Antonio Conte or anybody of that ilk? Or do you agree here with Jamie Carragher that it's complete nonsense in that sense that Manchester United simply can't look for a manager like that because of what's happened before? What do you think about what Roy Keane is saying there? Speaking about the players, they're bluffing, speaking about Fred, speaking about Van der Beek. There's, there's so many talking points. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, drop a like on the video if you would. And if you're new to United People's TV, please consider subscribing. But, I mean, that, the 5-0 to Liverpool was an utter, an utter humiliation. But I will put that City 2-0 on a level with it. And two weeks, only two weeks between those two games, two home games that are two home games back-to-back, this game set and match for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Manchester United have to plan for what's next. So who do you agree with here when it comes to what Keane and Neville, or both of them, had to say about Solskjaer? You let me know in the comments.